My guest is Sam Edelman. He's a professor emeritus and also executive director of Scholars for Peace in the Middle East. And we'll scroll the information on how they can contact you. Good. Um, now, one of the things you're dealing with as Scholars for Peace in the Middle East is the new situation on campus. Moves to boycott Israel, moves to deny the legitimacy, the apartheid week, whatever it is. What's the situation generally that, on campuses these days? Well, it's a growing hostility toward Israel generally, uh, and some campuses across the United States and also in Canada. Um, some of this hostility uh, comes from ignorance. Some of it comes because it's being promoted by uh, uh, Palestinian um, uh, activists, um, and some of it is, um, you know, part of a, just a, a general tenor of uh, a, a period of time where um, Israel has gone through some major upheavals uh, with uh, the caste-led uh, Gaza incursion and and things of that sort. So yes, there has been. Um, the last few years, there's been an, a, an increase, steady increase, in anti-Israel activities, anti-Semitic activities, um, How do you demonization of, um, of both Israel and the Jewish community. How do you differentiate, in your own mind, the difference between the anti-Semitic and the anti-Israel? Uh, you know, where, where does the line cross between the two? Well, criticism of Israel there's not, you know, there, there can be healthy criticism, uh, both from the Jewish community and from the Canadian and, and, and North American American communities. I mean, Israel's our friend and uh, an ally, and sometimes you can you can be critical of actions that the government may do. But when it goes into uh, all, what I call, what others call in the area of semantics, allness error, that uh, you, you, you blame all Israelis for an event that takes place, or you blame all Jews for an event that takes place, then you've moved away from simple criticism of an ally and a friend to outright bigotry and anti-Semitism. It's when you, demonize, you move to demonizing a group of people that's when you've moved into anti-Semitism. And what, much what of the ten, tenor mm -hmm. of, of uh, the discussion on college campuses has been one of a lack of civility and a kind of demonization that all events that are taking place in the Middle East that are wrong are because of Israel. When The moment that you've done that, you've moved into anti-Semitism. What about in between? If somebody doesn't believe in the self-determination of the Jewish people, and says, oh, I don't, I, they want to de delegitimize Israel. And they said, that's not anti Semitism. We just don't think it has a right. It was imposed imperially by the West. Do you think that's anti Semitism? I would think that's clearly anti Semitism. Okay. I mean, if they support the um, national aspirations of the Palestinians and they don't support the national aspirations of Jews, they're in an incompatibility. There's a problem there. And that problem is that they are generally bigoted in a, in, in, in a significant way. So no, I think that, uh, yes, I mean, th there is a, a, a line that's crossed when you move into the issue of delegitimation of Israel and saying, well, it's, it's okay for Palestinians to have a national home. It's not okay for the Jews to have a national home. That, that's bigotry. What about dealing with it? Because if it is bigotry and it's uh, a, f a form of anti-Semitism, then it's not subject to rational rules. Absolutely correct. And if it's not subject to rational rules, and yet it's on a campus that's supposed to be about rationality and discourse, how do you handle it? Do you handle it by banishment? Do you handle it by censorship? Do you handle it just by education and information? What are the tactics for dealing with it? Well, if we look at some of the statements made by those who are antagonistic toward Israel and toward the Jewish community on campus, for the most part they're dealing from propaganda rather than from critical thinking and from logic and rational thought. Um, the history of propaganda is that it's based on lies, it's based on half-truths, it's based on innuendo, and uh, as Goebbels the, the, the cliché that's become a cliché, you tell a lie off enough, it becomes the truth. And that's the basis of much of what's going on on campuses is that emotional 
responses to the world and lies and half-truths are being propagated over and over again. Well, the way to overcome this is to ask questions, to uh, the moment that you begin to question this kind of hypnotic thing that people are doing by, by lying over and over again, you begin to get them to see that, well, maybe there's something wrong here. Because in essence, our goal, our, our responsibility as university professors is to teach our students critical thinking. And teaching them critical thinking means that they have to better evaluate how and what people say with regard to the Middle East and Israel specifically. And when you turn the rocks over, and put the, the, the light of day on the creepy crawlies that are underneath there, often people become aware that, oh, I understand. For example, one of the problems that we have on campuses is this, the issue of human rights for Palestinians and Palestinian refugees. But at the same end, uh, students in the United States and Canada don't understand that as many, Palesti uh, as many Palestinian refugees were created by the war in 48 and 67, there were Jewish refugees from Arab lands who came to, to Israel and were resettled, whereas Palestinian refugees were not resettled by their respective Arab neighbors. So there's, there's th th this understanding that there's human rights violations on, on both sides, well, not uh, making it good for either side gives them an understanding that, okay, here's a position where negotiation and discussion needs to be held. It's not just an emotional response, and it's not just one side. But uh, Sam, I, I don't think maybe I made myself clear enough, because uh, I talked to you about it's, it's cognitive, it's information, and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe I'll illustrate it by an example. Uh, I gave a talk at Al Quds University on right of return, which is a very sensitive subject. It's a Palestinian conference, and received respectively disagreement. The most, the one who disagreed with me most was a Jewish member of the Al Fatah, but it was yes. very interesting. Um, but generally received respectfully, and was a, uh, and that was including Hamas people in the audience, um, which surprised me. Say, talk about similar things on a campus, which I once did, and in a, most times it doesn't come to this, but this was the one organized in these political ways on an anti apartheid week. And I walked away feeling dirty. The questioning was aggressive yes. and ideological. Yes. It was awful. There's a lack of civility. Exactly. And so you went away feeling you didn't want to be part of that. So how do you really encounter as a, somebody concerned with critical thinking and rationality and objective fact when you're ending up with these ideological uh, kind of diatribes? That's, that's the question I'm trying to get at. And it's not, I, didn't, I don't find it in the West Bank. Uh, no, no, I agree with you. And it's very difficult on campuses to deal with it. But part of what we deal with day in and day out is the attempt to create a civil discourse on, col on college campuses. Uh, Scholars for Peace in the Middle East has, be, uh, we have a legal task force that we've convened to look at issues of freedom of speech and academic freedom and where uh, one's academic freedom and freedom of speech abridges the freedom of speech of another. Maybe there's something that needs to be done here uh, from both a legal perspective as well as from a, a perspective of training young men and women and even college professors that civil discourse means you have to listen to what the other is saying, and you have to find arguments to overcome them rather than going into ad hominem attack and diatribe. That's not an easy thing. But we see this growing on campuses all over the world, this kind of incivil behavior, uncivil behavior. It's not just the Arab-Israeli conflict that we see this uncivil behavior. It happens in politics as well. But for us, uh, for Scholars for Peace in the Middle East, we have 55,000 um, um, participants with us all over the world and these men and women are in the forefront of efforts to try to bring civil discourse back to their campus especially regarding the Arab-Israeli conflict. Sam, can I ask you a favor? Yes. Uh, I know you've got to catch a plane and everything. Can you spend 10 more minutes with us oh, to absolutely. talk about scholars for peace in the Middle East? I'll be happy to do that. Okay, so we'll take a break and come back to that. Okay.